Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the series Linear Quadratic Regulator. In this lecture, we discuss the derivation and algorithm of continuous LQR. Here is the overview. We start with the continuous LQR problem, then we move on to the derivation and algorithm. Let's recall the continuous LQR problem from the last lecture, in which we consider a continuous time linear time varying system defined by equation 1. And the cost function is chosen as a quadratic sum of the states and control input as in equation number 2, in which Q, R and QF are the weighting matrix for the states and control inputs. Then in the continuous LQR problem, the task is to find the optimal control input for the linear system which minimizes the quadratic cost. In this lecture, we discuss how to find the optimal control input for this problem and in the derivations, we will be using linear time invariant system to simplify the notation. So this A of T and B of T will be A and B respectively. The same derivation which can be applied for linear time varying systems as well. And we only need to replace A and B by A of T and B of T. Next we move on to the derivation of continuous LQR. In general, the optimal control problems are solved using two approaches, which are the batch approach, also known as the iterative approach, in which the elements of the control input signal or sequence are optimized together. And the second one is the recursive approach, in which the elements of the control sequence are optimized recursively, it means one at a time. Even though we are considering control signal in continuous time here, the control law will be mostly implemented digitally. Therefore, in numerical solution of optimal control problems, the time horizon will be divided into a finite number of points as shown here, which we can denote as T0, T1 up to Tn minus 1. Corresponding to each time instant, we can have the control input as u of t0, u of t1 up to u of tn minus 1, which can be stored in a vector u as denoted here. In practice, the time duration between t0 and t1, which we denote as delta t, will be small. Now, in optimal control problem, our task is to find the optimal control sequence, which we can denote as u star, that results in the minimum cost. Then in the case of batch approach, we will be optimizing the control sequence iteratively, which means we start with an initial guess, let's say u0, which is then improved in each iteration. In the figure, the control sequence for the two successive iterations are shown, which are denoted as ui-1 and ui. Corresponding to each of these control sequences, we can have different state trajectories and which results in different costs. In numerical solutions, we design the algorithm in such a way that the cost corresponding to ui will be lesser than the cost corresponding to ui minus 1. Then eventually, we will be end up with the control sequence which results in the minimum cost or something closer to it. Now in the recursive approach, the elements of the control sequence are optimized one at a time and which is usually performed backwards in time. So we will be starting with tn minus 1 and optimize the corresponding control input. Then go backwards to Tn minus 2 and Tn minus 3 up to T0. One of the major recursive approach that is extensively used in optimal control problems is the dynamic programming. In most of the optimal control problems, we cannot have an analytical solution. Here by analytical solution, we mean a closed form expression for the optimal control input, which is difficult to obtain in most of the cases. So we can only try to find a numerical solution of the optimal control input which may not be exist in some times. However, when it comes to LQR, we can find an analytical solution as well because of the quadratic and convex nature of the cost function and linear nature of the system. So next, we will be discuss how to derive the analytical solution for LQR and we will be mainly following the dynamic programming approach. We have already seen that dynamic programming is a recursive approach in which the optimal control input is solved recursively in time. So in dynamic programming, we use a cost go function, which is the cost accumulated from the current instant till the end of the time horizon. And for continuous time LQR problem, we can define the cost go function as in equation number 3, which is basically the integral of the cost from the current instant till the end of the time horizon. Here we denote the current state by S, which is actually X of T, and the current control input by U, which is U of T. 
Now we have this important result. It says that for linear systems with quadratic cores, the optimal control input will be a linear state feedback, as in equation number four, in which k of t is the feedback gain. And similarly, the optimal cos 2 of function will be a quadratic function, as in equation number five, in which p of t is known as the Riccati matrix. And we have to find an expression for both k of t and p of t, which is discussed next. We can rewrite the cos 2 of function as in equation number six, in which we split the integration from t to tf into t to t plus delta t and t plus delta t to tf. So here we t plus delta t will be the cos 2 of function from t plus delta t till the end of the time horizon. Now using the first order approximation, we can rewrite x of t plus delta t as x of t plus x dot of t into delta t. And then using this, we can rewrite the cos 2 function as in equation number 7. In a similar way, we can approximate v t plus delta t as in equation number 8, in which we use the fact that v t plus delta t will also be a quadratic function and can be represented as x of t plus delta t transpose p of t plus delta t into x of t plus delta t. Then we use the first order approximation to p of t plus delta t and rewrite it as p of t plus p dot of t into delta t. And then by expanding this and neglecting the higher order times with the delta t square, we can obtain the final expression like this. So here we have x transpose p of t into x will be there. And then we have these other terms which are depending on delta t. Now if we substituting this in this equation, we obtain the final expression for v of t as in equation number 9. In dynamic programming, the optimal control input at each time instant is computed by minimizing the cost to function. So we have u star will be the minimizer of vt of x. And using the first order condition for optimality, we can find the optimal control input by equating the gradient of the cost to function with respect to the control input to zero. Then from this equation and if we take the gradient of this function with respect to u to 0, then we obtain 2r into u star plus b transpose p of t into x into delta t equal to 0. And solving for the control input, we obtain u star equal to minus r inverse b transpose p of t into x, which we can rewrite as minus k of t into x. So the expression for the optimal feedback gain is obtained as in equation number 12. And it is a time varying gain. Now find the optimal control input, we need to know the Riccati matrix P of t and its computation will be discussed next. By substituting u star instead of u in this equation, we can obtain an expression for the optimal cost to go function as in equation number 13. So here we have to substitute for u star and then simplify this expression which gives the final expression like this. And we have the optimal cost to go function will be a quadratic function, so it will be equal to x transpose P of t x. Here we have an x transpose p of tx in this time also. And in order to have this final expression equal to x transpose p of tx, we need the time inside this bracket should be zero. So we need to have a transpose p plus p a minus p b r inverse b transpose p plus q plus p dot equal to zero. From this, we obtain the final expression for the Riccati matrix p of t as in equation number 14, which is known as the Riccati differential equation or RDE. So here RDE is a matrix differential equation which is difficult to solve analytically. So we usually go for the numerical solution for finding the Riccati matrix. Next we move on to the algorithm for continuous LQR. We start by discussing the numerical solution for the RDE. For that we denote T as Tk which is equal to K times delta T and T minus delta T as Tk minus 1 which is K minus 1 times delta T. Then we can approximate p dot t as p of tk minus p of tk minus 1 by delta t. Now if we substitute this instead of p dot t in the RDE and rearrange the terms, we can rewrite RDE as in equation number 16. So which gives an expression for finding p of tk minus 1 from p of tk. And this results in a backward recursion algorithm. So in the algorithm for continuous LQR, so we start with p of tn which will be equal to the terminal weighting matrix. And from this, we compute p t n minus 1 using this equation. And using that, we compute k t n minus 1. 
and we repeat this and go backwards until k equal to 1, which gives p of t0 and k of t0. If we know the feedback gain at each dimension, we can find the corresponding control input. For large values of time horizon and n, computing and storing the feedback gain like this will be difficult. In that case, we can try to approximate this time varying feedback gain with a fixed matrix, and this will be discussed in the next lecture. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.